Hey guys, so I was planning on doing some more stuff with logout in this video, but I'm thinking I'm going to do one thing before that. I don't know about you guys, but the tests are starting to get harder to read and they're just getting quite long and really the what's they're not really complicated tests. It's just that each request takes a lot of lines of code and a lot of it is very duplicate. So what I want to take this video to do is create like a test client that will simplify these tests a ton and it abstract a lot of the duplicate code and what this client will be able to do is like log in log out call the me query and I don't have to do all this stuff right here and write the query every single time so I'm gonna create a TypeScript class that's basically gonna be handling all this stuff and I'm gonna put it in utils so I'm gonna call it um, test client .ts. and so we're gonna export class test client and uh, in the constructor we can set stuff up and the first thing we want to set up is what the uh, URL is going to be for this particular test because the URL changes per test. Um, so we'll go ahead and take that as the first parameter and that's going to be uh, a string and we'll say this.url is equal to URL and URL is a string. Okay so really what I want to do is set up the uh, Axios object so I can make all these requests in the future uh, but there's one thing I'm not liking about Axios and that is I don't get fine-grained control over cookies so there's this thing called a cookies jar um, that's very popular or I think it's called tough cookie and what it allows you to do is uh, see the cookies reset them if you want to and it'll make testing um, a lot easier and uh, Axios does not let us have access I don't know if it uses it or not um, but I'm going to switch over to a different library called request, which is also very popular. And we're going to use kind of like an offshoot of it called request promise. Um, and this is basically just the request library, um, except uh, it uses promises, which are nice. Um, and we're going to add the types for this as well. And what this library allows us to do is a little bit more control over how cookies are stored and reset, which we're going to need for our upcoming test. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and import this and it's going to serve the same purpose as Axios. So request promise. I know I'm just going to call it RP. Um, and so my goal with this is to create different um, functions in this test client. So for example, login. And what login will do is it'll take two parameters, email string, password string. Oops. And what it's going to return is uh, request promise. And it's going to go ahead and it's going to make a post request. And it's going to pass in the URL. So, you know, that's going to be a thing. And then the options, a um, couple options, we're going to be passing JSON, which is two, which is true. We're going to create a jar object, which is going to be rp.jar. Um, this is a cookie jar, so this is where all our cookies are going to be um, stored, and we can copy the type of that. So we're going to say jar is equal to that, um, and I don't know if it's a capital capital R or um, I'm not sure what the best way to uh, import this. Maybe it's rp dot no. So it's request, basically I can't find the namespace that this is um, using. If I click on it maybe, all right. So it declares this namespace called request, but it is not, um, I won't even worry about it. I'm just gonna give it the type of any. Okay, so basically we can reuse this jar and it'll save the cookie between requests. Axios was saving the cookie between requests automatically for us. I like having this jar because then I explicitly see whether I'm passing the cookie in or not. And this will make more sense when we're using it. So I want to pass in the jar. So this.jar. I want to pass in uh, this.url as this first parameter. And then the body I want to pass in as well and with credentials is true. And what I want the body to be here is going to be a query. And then this is this would be our uh, query that we had before. 
and I can just copy it uh, if we come over here to I think we have it in me as well copy that paste it and then we can pass in our email and password all right and so then I'd be able to call login in multiple different places okay now you'll notice these kind of options right here are going to be used pretty much on every single request so what I'm going to do is um, again abstract this and I'm just gonna say um, this dot options and I'm gonna say with credentials is true and then put oops put these in there so URL and jar So now I'm going to say options is equal to an object with the URL of string, jar which is any, and then with credentials which is a boolean. So I can say, and I think I also had the option of JSON in there as well, JSON.true. So JSON is a boolean as well. And I actually don't need the URL inside of here. We can move it outside. Okay. Okay, so I initialize my options up here for my request. So I have the URL, and then these three options, which we're going to use across all of our requests. Here's the types for them. And then here, instead of specifying them every time, I'm just going to say dot 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 this dot options. All right, so now I can duplicate this and I can use it all over the place. So I want to do uh, the me query, which doesn't take any parameters and can copy whatever we have over here. Give that a save and we can tab it over. All right, and I want to have a log out as well basically all the different requests now um, and did I, I did I do one too many yeah there we go so log out get our test okay so this is at least a good start so now for example in my resolver over here in my log out test I'll no non I'll no longer need these um, all I'll now do, and instead of doing Axios, is I'm going to say const client is going to be equal to new test client, and I just need to pass in a URL, which is process.m.testhost as string, and then we only do this the first time. And now what I can do is I can say await client.login, and I need to pass in my email and password. And then I can say const response is equal to await client.me. And you can see already, this is so much cleaner um, to write our tests than it, is, than it was before. And I can say client.logout. And then Cons response to is equal to client dot me. All right, so we can see the the test here is now a much nicer. Oh, I forgot to await this. It's much shorter and much nicer to read. I can now see I'm logging in with my client. I then get whoever my client is. Uh, then I see and make sure I'm getting the right user ID in my right email. Then I log him out, get that user, and I make sure it's not null. Now I'm not sure if I still have to do this intermediate dot data. Uh, I can go ahead and run a test and see what happens. I think it might be one too many, uh, but we'll see. And uh, I'm not exactly sure what the shape of the response is. This stuff is what Axios needed right here, uh, and it might be a little bit different. All right, so so expected value to be equal to that, but was really undefined. So kill that. 
kill that. We'll try again. And nice. So we are able to uh, simplify that code a little bit. And now I can do the same thing for my me one over here. So I can say const client is equal to new client test client URL is going to be this and then client dot login. Sorry, we, we're doing the me query here. There we are, and then over here we're going to do the same thing. And I could also um, create the test client above the test if I wanted to, but I don't want to share any type of like cookies between, so I'm just going to create a client per test. I'm totally cool with doing that. Um, client dot login email password and I also want to bring over the register one as well await client.me okay so that's that lastly I guess is our uh, let's do register real quick so copy this go to our test client async register email is a string password is a string um, here's what our query is going to be I'm gonna copy the code here let's copy that better like that yeah and oops I'm copying this poorly I just want to move my mutation inside of here and do that a few times and then pass in the email and password that they pass in okay so then in my login test I don't need this I can go ahead and I'm gonna copy that and I guess it is a little bit more simplified here await client.login and we can import this email password and we're going to say response.data okay and nothing to really do here cuz it's just calling this I guess we don't have to create a new client um, here every single time. What I'll do is I'll move this to this test and to this test and then I'll take as one of the parameters here the client, test client. And we'll pass this in like so. Alright, so we're going to say await client.register email password. Cannot find the names EP. Oh, it's actually just email and password. Here, pass in our client pass in our client lastly we try to do a login response again so const response await client.login email password and I think it's response.data and I think we just have one more and that's our register over here so let's copy this test client register.test and can remove this bit here. Okay, so client.register email password. I'll await it. 
response.data. You could do the same thing down here. So response to dot data dot data and again I think this should be one of the last places. So we're going to say const response three is equal to await client dot register. I guess we're passing in B and then password. And we say data. Email and AD. So email AD response four. Is this the last one? Okay, yeah, this is the last one. And we do this a bunch. I guess we're checking the different ways you can register poorly though. So response five. This is going to be df ad and should be response dot data. Alright, so we just did a lot of changes to these tests. Let's see what's working and what's not. Looks like only one failed, so that's actually pretty good. So I only messed up one of them. Um, and it's going to be get current user, response.data.data, get rid of that one. And awesome. So now all of our tests pass. And they are much simpler to just read and see what's going on now. So that is fantastic. Um, and then in the next video, what we'll do is we'll continue on with the logout and uh, get that to log out for multiple sessions. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for following along.